they have been considered to be the strongest creature in Path of Titans. Argentinosaurus. It has been considered to be one of the biggest terrestrial creatures to have ever walked the planet. It is a powerhouse in Path of Titans, and with great power comes a lot of fun. Forget the responsibility, let me teach you how to wield it. Hello, my name is Adam Blokte, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly fight as an Argentinosaurus. Like normal, any future update may change the way you play as this creature, and if you find something I say disagreeable, just say it in a common fashion way down in the comments. Yes, I know I said previously that I was going to wait until Pounce and Grapple got introduced into the game, but I cannot wait making these videos, and I just decided, you know what? Let me just make a video of the dinosaur that I think probably won't have their combat styles change too much into the future and I landed on Argentinosaurus. At the very least, I don't believe that Argentinosaurus are going to receive any pouncing or grapple uh, abilities, but if they do, then why are they making this OP creature even more OP? I'll talk more about this at the end of the video, but for now, let's just hop right into it. In this video, we will be talking about the arsenal of the Argentinosaurus, what subspecies you should grow, the terrain compatibility, and what type of fights you can find yourself in. And at the end, I'll summarize. The Argentinosaurus arsenal is a bit vast, and first category are unnamed. I can only assume that these are extra abilities. First ability does nothing. Second ability increases stamina recovery. Third ability increases defense against bone break, I think. For head abilities, we have two abilities. We have the headbutt, which are just a quick headbutt attack which can also be used while running. Second ability is a violent shake which violently shake off any attackers. And I can also see this being useful against any pouncers in the future. We'll have to wait and see. Your front limb abilities are a left and right variation of a front stomping ability, which does a lot of damage. Like I said, you have a left and right variation of this attack, and with two slots, you can equip both of them at the same time. For hides, we have three options. The first one doing nothing. The second one is a thin hide, which increases movement speed at the cost of turn radius. The last one, Solidifying Hide, increases Bleed Heal by 30%. The back limb abilities are the same as for the front limb, a left and right variation of a backward stomp, dealing massive damage. Like I said, you have a left and a right uh, variation, and you can equip both at the same time. Your tail attack is your main weapon, and also one of the longest tail in the game, meaning it has also one of the best range. Your voice ability is a solidifying bellow that increases armor, but most of all, it is also a huge stomp that deals incredible amount of damage, often being the deciding factor if you win or lose a fight. The cooldown on this attack lasts pretty long, but if you consider that uh, this attack can one-shot most creatures, then the cooldown kinda makes sense. Many have their own taste, but this is at least what I rock around with when I play Argentinosaurus. The subspecies of Argentinosaurus used to be the standard balanced speed and defense. However, now they all seem to be all balanced. It might just be a technical error. And if it is, if you choose what used to be the defense Argentinosaurus, then you are basically untouchable. But that can also be a bad thing, because nothing really wants to attack you. In this video, I will be utilizing a balanced Argentinosaurus, and even then, many people won't attack me. In any case, if you want a nearly unkillable Argentinosaurus, then I would go for defense. When it comes to the terrain compatibility, it kinda depends on how hard you want to make it for yourself. First of all, one of the main feature or eye-catching feature of the Argentinosaurus besides the size are of course its tail. I said earlier that this tail has incredible range since it's one of the longest tail in the game, and with that in consideration you would think that open plains would be best suited for Argentinosaurus, and you're not wrong, but there are terrains where you are clearly too overpowered to be in. In tight spaces, or in this case a valley, you can see how there's no room to dodge the tail ability. If any attackers tries from behind, they will have almost no chance of dodging the tail smack. 
and if they try to come from in front, you will have a bunch of storms ready to trample them, one of them being their worst nightmare. Clearly difficult if not impossible to kill an Orchid in such situations, and in my opinion I think those tactics are a bit dirty. Also players usually don't hang around in such areas, so you probably won't be able to utilize this strategy too much. As for combat, let's say 1v1s, this is a bit more of the frustrating part of playing the Argentinosaurus. I mean, I can't blame people for not wanting to attacking you. I mean, we're talking about a creature that makes the Apexes, Giga, Rex and Spinosaurus to look small in comparison. In terms of 1v1, a lone carnivore Apex are usually not a threat to you unless he's really good. The only creature that has a fair chance against you is another Argentinosaurus, and to be honest, those Argentinosaurus fights or duel are usually just a competition or a race to see which one of you can get the big storm into each other first. After you have landed the big stomp on the Argentinosaurus, it is up to you if you want to finish them off by either stomping them to death or just tail smack them. Also, I would like to note that it is actually easier for you to win such competition and duels if you have the high ground. Yes, I can't believe that the Obi-Wan strategy actually works in this situation, but it is because since you are a bit higher than the other Argentinosaurus, it is easier for you to land a perfect blow on him. Of course, this strategy is a bit risky and I'd say it's about 50-50 if you landed a hit or not, and if you don't land a hit, then you can always try the other strategy. I didn't get to do this with another Argent, so just pretend that this ant is an Argent. As you can see, if you don't land the hit, you can just try and keep the other Argent or creature in your tail, and just keep smacking them. The tail does a lot of damage, so this is a good way to just punish them and slowly but surely chip away their health. Also, if the other Argent still have their big stomp, it will be more difficult to hit you since you're facing away from them. As for other creatures besides the Argentinosaurus, it is usually just the same cycle. Usually start off with somebody believing that they have a chance. You either stomp or smack them a bunch, and then they'll return back to reality. Of course, if you go into deep water and let them have the terrain advantage entirely, then they might stand a chance. Also, I forgot to mention, in this video I'm solely going to focus on Apexes. You see, mid tiers they just don't stand a chance. Even if they attack you by surprise, the damage they can do are minimum. Even if you just walk into a herd of them, most of them won't even attack. Sure, sooner or later you might run into one cheeky bugger, but usually Argents are just too much for mid tiers to handle. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because it kinda makes the gameplay boring. Heck, even I tried battling an Argent in a 1v1, and let's just say, even when I did a surprise attack with my most strongest ability, not to mention with the creature I am most experienced with, and terrain advantage, well, let's just say, even with all of that, I didn't stand much of a chance. I will say that as an Argent, you need to be wary of where you place your head. If the enemy gets a headshot, then they might do more damage than you initially expected. I didn't manage to kill an Argent with my Spino solo, but I have heard of people who have managed to do it. As a Spino, of course. But if we talk about what the Apex are best suited against the Argentinosaurus and which one Argentinosaurus players should worry about most, are Giganotosaurus players. I'll come back to that later. If you are attacked by another species in packs, and of course you will because that's the only way they have a chance to actually kill you, then the first strategy it is of course to focus on one, or at least prioritizing the ones that are below you. Of course if they are below you, then you can just stomp them to death. Either hit them with the normal stomps, or if you want to finish the battle quickly, then do the big stomp, and only if you are certain you can hit them. If they see that staying underneath you is a bad idea, then just finish them off with the tail swipe. Because the tail is long range, they will have a difficult time getting out of its shots. The fighting style of Argentinosaurus are usually head to head fighting, and such fighting style usually favors the ones with better stats. 
in other words the Argentinosaurus. However, the weakness for such playstyles are creatures who can give damage over time, even without touching you. In this case, that will be bleeding, meaning that those who can give bleed are the Argentinosaurus weakness. I mentioned how a Giganotosaurus is the biggest threat to Argentinosaurus, that is because not only do they have decent damage, but their bleed are insane. As a matter of fact, there is one combination that is just disastrous for Argentinosaurus. That is the combination of two good Giga players out in an open field with elevation, meaning that they can dodge and duck underneath the tail ability, give you a lot of bleed, and then just run you down with time. Rexes don't have good bleed, so they can't really utilize this technique, as Spinos lack mobilities. So yeah, definitely be careful with Gigas. So to summarize, in a 1v1 against another Argentinosaurus, try to be the first one to land the big stomp. After you've done that, it is up to you if you want to finish them off or just let them go. They usually lose their will to fight after that. If you don't want to risk being hit by the big stomp, just face away, not only with Argents but also other creatures, and just tail smack them. If they are underneath you, don't tail smack them, just stomp them to death. Just continue stomping them, stomp, 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 and if they try to get out of your range or out of your stomp ability, then switch from stomping to tail smack. Now I know it's a bit weird that I'm uploading a video right after they have released a teaser for the Ounce and Grapple update. If you haven't seen it yet, you should totally do it, it was awesome! Back to the matter at hand, again, I really think that the Argentinosaurus won't receive any grapple or pouncing abilities, I mean, that just sounds silly. As for the abilities being used on them, well, I don't know about you, but I just don't see how a Sarcosuchus or Dinosuchus or even Sachi are going to be able to grapple and carry away a fully grown Argentinosaurus, I just don't see it. As for raptors being able to pounce on the Argentinosaurus, I really believe that the shake ability of the Argentinosaurus might play a role in that in the future. But what do you think? With the pouncing mechanic, will raptors actually be a threat to Argentinosaurus? With that, I'll beat you guys adieu and I'll see you later.